Hello everybody, welcome to Jersey Bayshore Country. I'm your host, John Schneider, and today's program is all about trains, planes, and automobiles, and other hobbies that people are interested in, especially me. I love trains, and so the first thing we're going to talk about is trains. And with me is uh, a, uh, an aficionado, the uh, hobby master at Hobby Masters, Alan Placer. How you doing, Alan? Great, John. Thanks for having me. Ha today. Happy holidays. I, I, I'm so excited about this. Uh, so uh, I, I've asked Alan to kind of explain to us the difference between the gauges, and here are four different gauges, but how many ultimately are there? Are there more than four? There are more than four. There are some that are a little smaller. There's actually a Z gauge that we don't have an example of here, uh, and you can go even larger, and a couple in between, but the four that I brought out are the main ones that you can get the most equipment for uh, and are most economical to run. So why don't we go through these gauges, Alan? What do we have out here in the, in the front? Sure. Lift that up and show everybody. The little guy here, this is N-Gage. Uh, they're very small, uh, not for uh, young hands to play with just because they're very hard to get in and on and off the track at this size. But you can do a beautiful layout in a very small space uh, and, and just have a lot of fun uh, without you know, dedicating your home to it. Okay, what, what about this one here? What Th this gauge is, is that? This called That's... HO gauge, which is mm -hmm. half of O gauge, That's O gauge better. being the larger one here. Uh, HO gauge is probably the most, uh, as, as far as realistic scenery, uh, these ones you can make layouts that when you take a picture you can't tell if it's real or not. Wow. Uh, there's just a, the most available to add on to HO gauge. A 4x8 uh, sheet of plywood can do an incredible train layout with these. There you go. And, and this one, let's let's lift this one up together. This is a heavy, uh, heavy thing, isn't it? Right. This is heavy. This is O gauge. O gauges are mostly metal and the good quality ones. Uh, they can fit a lot more electronics inside of them, so you can do a lot more in an economical price range with sound, lights, smoke, things like that. Uh, this is the style that your grandparents probably had, uh, wow. but they've improved them tenfold since the 1950s. They've really put a lot of modern technology into them. Now, do the, do the heavier trains uh, stay on the track better than the small trains as they go around corners? Uh, that's more about the quality of the train layout. Is it? Uh, yeah, that's where I talk about the big box stores. Uh, having ones that they'll fall off no matter what speed you're going. Uh, whereas a good quality train, that's part of it, is making sure that they stay on the track well. Okay, and what gauge is this funky looking thing? Let me uh, give it to you and sure. you can explain. That's heavy too. Yeah, this is called G gauge. Uh, these are excellent trains. Uh, there's again some toy quality ones and mm -hmm. then there's some very high quality ones that come out of Germany. Uh, these ones are fabulous for running outdoors. Uh, they actually, everything except the engine is waterproof, so you can build a giant garden layout with them. Wow. Uh, we have a set of these that's uh, running around our store since the early 1980s. Uh, and the set is unchanged since then. Wow. Uh, is that the one you've got sus suspended? That's the suspended. That, that, that's been out. running for how many years? That's been running since the early 1980s. Uh, we once calculated that it's gone around the earth four times. <laughs> oh my God. And if you want to see any of these uh, uh, these different gauges, I mean, uh, any uh, well-equipped uh, hobby shop should have them. But even behind us, you've got all the different gauges on display, right? Right. We actually keep an operating uh, layout here that's got a demo of of every size of train that'll help you select what's best for your space that you're going to work with uh, and also we can test your trains right in front of you with them if you bring in a repair. And there's all sorts of different components now I, I remember uh, back in the day uh, there was the tunnel and I was always fascinated with that you could build little houses and stuff but now almost everything has some operational aspect to it doesn't it? Yeah it's really uh, a lot of fun with the train layouts is the to see things moving uh, and everything can move you can have people ice skating on a pond <laughs> uh, you can have cattle cars automatically loading onto trains, uh, buildings with lighting in them, uh, fire, all kinds of cool, you know, anything that you want can pretty much be created on a layout. What, what is uh, some of the, uh, you, you design some of these layouts for your customers, don't you? How, how does that, uh, we're, we're going to look at some of that uh, during the show. Uh, people come to you and they have an idea. How does somebody get started in saying, you know, I want you to help me create a layout? Right. No two layouts are ever the same. Uh, so we have people that come to us uh, they either have an existing layout that they want us to redo, expand on, or they just have a space in their home uh, and they have a scale in mind, they have a time period in mind, uh, and then we just you know, design it and make their dreams come true. We either 
build them at their house. We go to your house every day. You get sick of seeing us after a while because uh, it does take a while to build. And then some of the train layouts we'll actually build here in the store, then break them down and put them in your house over a course of a few hours. Well, let's talk about uh, the train set that you have in the back room, which is the, uh, the master workshop, I guess it is. You, you've built that from the ground up, literally, with the, with the table and all of the equipment. Talk a little bit about that customer and how that sort of uh, derived itself into a, into a, a model that works for the sure. customer. Uh, well, the way that layout worked is the customer came to us uh, with a space that he had that he wanted to work with. Uh, he had specific table dimensions that he wanted the layout to fit in. Uh, and then, uh, you know, we came back to him. We go back and forth with several different track plans uh, and give him the opportunity to edit them until he comes out with the track plan design that they want. Uh, then we start building the table, and while that's under construction, we go over with them what scenery that they want on it. Uh, this particular layout has a downtown area. Uh, it has a cool water tower and a lot of different features on it uh, that the customer gets to pick what they want. Uh, and then, of course, if they want to just give us a little artistic freedom, uh, we'll create something exciting that you know they may not have expected. And today is the is the world premiere of this particular uh, uh, setup. Uh, how long did it take from the time the customer came and talked about the uh, d design components to today? How long did that take? This particularly, I'd spent about four months in building. Wow, wow. And, and uh, what is the most popular scale for, for, uh, for your customers? What do they like the best? Uh, currently, the most popular scale is the uh, O scale, uh, the Lionel. That seems to be the trend right now. Uh, it varies. It changes with the years, and it's really what each individual wants. And, and t t let's talk a little bit more about the, the, uh, the layout that you have in the back. Uh, we're looking at it now. Uh, can, can you give us some of the uh, some of the trivia regarding this? Uh, some of this stuff isn't out of the box uh, uh, lakes and ponds and grass and trees. Some of this stuff was made from scratch by your uh, craftsmen. Right. We actually, um, when we get a large layout like this one, we'll call out to our customers that we know have layouts that they've built and have portfolios of them, and we'll bring in different people to work on different sections of it. Uh, to create what people want. You know, when you're creating a lake for somebody, it's got to fit in the area that you want it to fit. Uh, so we'll custom mold the water to shape. Uh, same thing with mountains and trees. That's all custom done for each layout and is placed where the customer wants it. And, and I know the layout uh, depends upon the complexity and, and the size. But uh, w what are some of the sizes of layouts that you've worked with for customers? Uh, well, we've done really small ones. Uh, I think the smallest one we've done is about uh, two foot square. Mm -hmm. uh, down to ones that take up uh, giant basements, uh, about 60 or 80 feet long uh, by 40 feet wide. Wow. Uh, yep, and the entire middle filled with access panels to get into. Uh, and then, you know, some of them aren't about the size of the layout. It's the location of them when you're placing them uh, up around a bar at a you know a restaurant uh, you know or the pizzerias that have them running back and forth mm. uh, a lot of different aspects go into making them work wow and and, and then you've got to transport this thing uh, to, to their home where do most people set these things up in the garage in the basement in the rec room all of the above uh, we've done basements uh, we've done a, a four story uh, of a house that it's not easy to get them all the way up there, uh, wherever people want them. Uh, sometimes it's the kids moved out and this is what their room is becoming. Uh, so, any place. Wow. So, so if, if, I, if I have to, uh, if I wanted to do a, a layout with you, uh, like this one, uh, generally speaking, what, what's the range of cost for designing this and setting this up and delivering it to my home? Uh, it really varies depending sure. on what you want. Uh, for the sets that get built at people's houses, uh, they can start at around $500, and they, we've gone up to around $50,000 on Holy some of the biggest mackerel. ones. Holy mackerel. Yes. Holy mackerel. And, 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 and do you have any sense of the kind of people that, that are into this hobby? Why are generally people fascinated with trains, and especially model trains? Uh, well, I think a lot of it is the relaxation factor that you get from playing with a train. Uh, it takes you away from your world, uh, away from your stresses, uh, and you just get to kick back and play in a make-believe world without being on a computer screen, which you did at work all day. Sure. And not everybody can afford uh, $50,000 for one 
one of these huge layouts or even a layout like we looked at at earlier that could be several thousand dollars. Uh, what about the, the casual train enthusiast or maybe someone that's never had a train set before and uh, maybe it's for a child, maybe it's for an adult. What's a good starter uh, kind of set or uh, how, how should somebody get started with trains? A great way to start is with a starter set. Uh, Lionel uh, and all the train uh, sizes and manufacturers, they make starter sets that have an oval of track with them, a transformer, engine, uh, and a couple of cars, everything you need to get started with it. Uh, and then you can add on to it from there, again, based on what space you have to work with. How is the technology uh changed over the years on these trains. Alan, uh, I remember I had a big old rheostat thing. I might have even seen sparks back in those days. I'm not so sure. And the, and, and the train would smoke. This was back in the 50s. How are things different today? Well, the trains today have gotten a lot more fun when you have, you know, a good quality train. Uh, you have lights, you have smoke. Uh, the sound is now digital, so it's a really impressive sounding. They change with the speed of the train. Wow. Uh, and then the controllers for it, instead of your giant rheostat knobs, we actually have handheld remotes, so you can walk around with it, uh, <laughs> and it has buttons on it to activate everything, wow. uh, which is much nicer, and the reliability has gone up uh, on the trains tremendously. What, what kinds of things do you have here? What kinds of things should should somebody look for when they go to a hobby shop that and they want to buy uh, trains or train equipment and that sort of thing? Right. You want to make sure you can get everything to build a planet. Uh, meaning grass, trees, water, people, animals, houses, of course the different train track, rolling stock cars, uh, every single thing should be in the store uh, and with experts that can you know, help you pick which one is compatible with your layout. Wow, wow. And, and the trains are modeled after, they, they don't make these trains up, these are real trains that existed either in the past or the present, correct? Correct, just about every train out there is a model of a real existing train. And, and of course, uh, Thomas the Train is not real, but you have Thomas the Train here too for kids, correct? And, yes, and Thomas is real. Oh, Thomas is there, real. There, there is a real Thomas engine that runs in Strasburg, Pennsylvania. My gosh, well, who knew? Well, this is this is, this is is marvelous. Did you have a train uh, uh, set when you were a kid? I had several. Uh, if you wanted to actually go see some big trains, uh, older trains or steam locomotive trains, I know that you can go to Alaire State Park. We just did a show on that. Have, have you seen any other areas around New Jersey or Pennsylvania where you can take a ride or take a look at uh, some old trains? Sure. Nearby, I believe the two nearest ones is uh, New Hope, Pennsylvania, has a uh, live steam train you can ride on. Nice. Uh, and Strasburg, Pennsylvania is a uh, train lover's paradise where not only can you ride on a steam engine, they have the Pennsylvania Railroad Museum uh, and a uh, caboose lodge you can sleep in a caboose. Fantastic. Well, Alan is uh, clearing away all of the trains. Uh, we're going to move to the next, uh, uh, I believe, most popular item in here, and that is the quadcopter, or as some people call it, the drone. So I'll take off my engineer's hat for now and uh, let my hair blow in the wind as we launch a, uh, a quadcopter. Uh, tell us about this one. Uh, this is called the Chroma. This is uh, probably our most popular quadcopter right now. Uh, outside of the small little guys. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It is a uh, family use and it's also a commercial use uh, quadcopter. Uh, it does quite a lot. It's got a uh, camera you can either pick from a 1080 or a 4K camera. Uh, it's on a three axis gimbal so when I move the quad you can see it keep the camera stable. Uh, it has a GPS system on it and what the GPS does for you is it gives you the ability to hit a switch on the controller and return the quad home automatically. Uh, it will return back and land right where it took from. It also uh, helps with the stability of it. Uh, if we were to take off with this right between us, it will actually stay between us uh, for up to 30 minutes of flight time wow. and just sit there wow. uh, using the GPS to lock it in place. Uh, on top of that, it's also got a tracking system. So <laughs> if you want to go out uh, surfing or uh, off-roading or bike riding, it can follow you automatically and keep the camera locked. Well, I, I, the, the big question for me is I, I see these things uh, on sale at the uh, local department stores for 40 bucks, and everybody thinks that's a quadcopter. That's something they could buy for themselves or for their kids. But what's the difference between buying some cheap 
thing, cheap quadcopter, and this. Well, ask anybody who uh, went to a mall and bought a helicopter in the RC helicopter craze days uh, <laughs> and were very disappointed with it. The same thing is happening with quadcopters. Uh, there's a lot of cheap Chinese garbage out there. You have to watch out for what you're buying. If you don't get it from a store that has parts available for it, odds are there's not parts available sure, for it. Um, sure. And uh, you want to get ones that you know are reputable so that you have fun with them. And, and this is one of the best. I, I use this one myself, but uh, this is over a thousand dollars. And the reason it's expensive primarily is because of this camera and the fact that it's incredibly easy to fly and it has a built-in screen in the controller that allows you to see what the camera's seeing, right? Right. Everything you could want it to do, it's built into it already. But like you're saying, it is $1,000. Uh, it's not what you want to buy your eight-year-old necessarily for Christmas. Um, you can get much smaller ones that uh, you could still have a whole lot of fun with. Now, the FAA is uh, very nervous, as are we all, about the future of quadcopters in terms of uh, 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 national security and airport safety and, and airplane safety and that sort of thing. And things are constantly changing. So by the time you see this program, things could be changed again. But for the nervous person who's out there and wants to get one but says, well, I don't want to invest in this uh, only to be told I can't fly it, what's the latest on, on the policies? Right now the rules are don't fly within five miles of an airport, don't fly at a national park, uh, and uh, use common sense, uh, keep it below 400 feet, uh, and honestly, anything you're going to video is going to be below 400 feet also. Uh, anytime we sell one of these large quadcopters people, we actually right on the spot give you a quick flight lesson, not just to give you an opportunity to learn the rules of it, but also to make sure you're comfortable with it uh, and understand the safety to it. And, and if you're going to get one just to fly it around and do acrobatics and things like that, uh, this may not be the quadcopter that you want to get. Uh, this is really uh, mostly for, uh, for taking uh, videos and photographs at, at that high altitude. Uh, and it's also expensive. Now, if you just want to play a little bit, you've got something here that is uh, looks interesting. What is it? Right. This is a popular one called the Proto Z. Well, look at this. Uh, Let me show. Look at this one. Look how ti look how tiny that is. Isn't that amazing? Yep. These are really nice little stable guys. Uh, they plug into a USB port to charge them, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they're very easy to fly. This little guy is uh, about $40. Oh my goodness, really? Yep, and uh, we're just going to get him booted up here, and I'll show you real quick. I mean, in such a small space that we're in for this show here, I could take off with him. I'm no expert with it, and... Uh, Look at that. Well, Look at I that. am an expert with him, but... Oh my gosh, give me a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> and it's very easy. I need to give very little input to keep it moving. So, so this, uh, speaking of... Uh, 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 teasing your pets, this would be perfect for the cat or the dog that wants to have a toy. Until they catch it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's only $40, no camera, but, right. and, and, and you don't, uh, it, it might be uh, difficult to fly outside because as it gets a little bit higher, it's going to be hard to see. What's the right. range of this thing, do you suppose? Uh, as far as you can see, you'll still have control of it. Uh, yeah. It's got a cool flip over button too on it. Oh, to, really? Uh, do stunts and it'll, it, will it fly while it's flipped over? Not this one, oh, but okay. there's other ones that do that. But it'll fly going down. Yes, <laughs> okay. all the way to the ground. <laughs> well, that's terrific. And if you're interested in uh, drones and uh, quadcopters, uh, uh, do Google uh, and try to find out uh, what the latest FAA policies are. As I said, the, the rules and the policies are, are swiftly changing for our national security, and uh, I'm glad that they are, quite frankly. All right, let's see what Alan has on the table next. Uh, what do you got, Alan? Oh, uh, this is one of the newest radio control cars that everybody's been uh, drooling over. Does this have a gauge, too? Do these things have gauges? They have scales, too. Scales, them. scales, yes. okay. Uh, we bought one of the larger and smaller ones up to show. Uh, we have... Let's tip that up so people can see, okay? Look at, look at, look at this thing. This is... Th th you can almost ride this, or at least take your cat for a ride. So tell us about this thing here. Uh, this is a lot of fun. This is called the Arma Creighton. Uh, it is a fabulous vehicle that can just go anywhere, do it at up to 60 miles an hour speeds, wow. uh, and just take a lot of abuse. This is a blast to run. Uh, it's a great car for the more advanced uh, RC or somebody that's really into bashing hard. Uh, it, it's We've had a 
great time with this car. Now, are these are, are these uh, built now so that they can crash and survive, basically? Uh, yes, there's no such thing as bulletproof, yeah. uh, but they take a lot of abuse, and they are repairable if you do break them, too. And, and, and uh, what can you do with this? I mean, uh, what, let's see what it looks like underneath. Sure. What the, what the works look like Underneath here. the car. This is what's changed radio control cars. They used to all be uh, gas-powered or... Uh, properly known as nitro powered oh, yeah. uh, and they switched to brushless electric now uh, brushless electric is basically what a real Tesla is uh, the brushless electric car is faster than a nitro car it doubles the acceleration we get more runtime than you could on a tank of fuel uh, and uh, we have waterproof electronics and none of the tuning this is something that you go to work you come home you want to play it's ready to go all the time and what is something like this cost? Uh, this model is around $450. Wow. And that's another nice thing. The pricing has come way down on the high quality RC cars uh, recently. There are clubs and races happening almost all the time, aren't there? Right. There, I'm actually a professional RC car driver, meaning I go to different tracks uh, around the country, wow. uh, and I have sponsors that cover a lot of the costs to it. Wow. Uh, and that's no different than any uh, off-road racing or any other motorsport. Mm. And and so uh, this this is what scale is this? This is considered one a scale. And and how how big and how small do you have them here? Uh, well, we go up to one fifth scale that we keep in the store, which is about the size of the two of these models combined. <laughs> uh, and then we go down to one thirty second scale, which is about that big. Wow. Uh, and, and it's a matter of where you're going to run the car and how much you want to invest in your hobby. Well, I, I had one of these uh, when I was uh, younger. We're going to look now and see what else Alan has put on the table. Uh, I think we're going airborne again. Uh, what do you got, Alan? Oh, my goodness. That looks like a... Uh, is that light? That looks light. Yeah, uh, airplanes have taken a major change with technology. Uh, they've gotten a lot lighter, but at the same time a lot stronger. Uh, the majority of planes today are made of... Uh, we call it compressed foam. Uh, most people call it styrofoam. Hmm. Uh, but this is not the same styrofoam that uh, your boxes may come packed with. Uh, they're very dense foam, and the reason for foam is that it takes a lot of abuse, it's very easily repaired in the field, and you can buy entire replacement pieces. Uh, whereas the old days where we built planes out of wood, uh, they were heavier and they took a long time to repair. So you can control the aerialon, aerialons, right? Ailerons, so, yes. Ailerons, yeah, I almost got it right. <laughs> and uh, there's a, a, what kind of battery? Is it a battery or what is it that you've put up here? Flying nowadays has also gone to electric uh, because of the power you get with electric and the safety of electric. Uh, you're not going to cut your finger off putting your uh, finger in this propeller. Uh, so it's a lot safer to fly, uh, easier for you know father and son to mm -hmm. get into flying and enjoy flying together. Uh, and today's trainer planes now, in the, again, in the hobby grade level, uh, they have gyro systems on the airplane that will oh. keep the plane level flying for you. Anytime you let go of the controls or get out of control, they'll automatically level themselves out uh, and make it very easy for you to teach yourself to fly. How long will this uh, stay up in the air uh, with, the, with a charged battery? Most planes will fly for about 10 minutes oh, okay. uh, and they can recharge in about 20 minutes. So if you have a second or third battery pack with you, you can fly almost nonstop. And you have a whole bunch of these in in the store, various sizes. And these, I suppose, are scaled as well? Uh, they're not scaled. It's just a matter of the wingspan and how big you get. Uh, co popular uh, misconception with airplanes is that you'll start with a small one because it's easy and safer. In reality, a larger plane is easier to fly. It's more stable and it has more lift. Plus, you can see it better when it gets further away. And, and I know, too, that uh, we're not going to show them today but there are also RC boats right that go in the water and they're like little speed boats and things but um, are, are they a little bit more problematic to handle do you think I mean depending upon waves and wind and that sort of thing right. boats it's important to get the right size boat for the water you're going to be running in if you're running in a lot of chop you have to get a bigger boat you can't scale the wave down. kind of like jaws we need a bigger boat <laughs> exactly uh, boats were the first ones to switch from gas to electric though hmm. because they don't stall and we have boats in electric that do over 60 miles an hour my gosh. so it, it's a a lot of fun uh, and we have a lot of great waterways in the Bayshore area to run them on. Well, uh, so far we've uh, we've looked at lots of RC stuff. I think now we're going to look at uh, rockets. Uh, if you enjoy uh, rockets, uh, let's see what Alan has brought to the table. So what do you what do you have there, Alan? 
Okay, this is a model rocket starter set. Uh, this contains everything you need to get flying. Uh, rockets are totally unchanged since the invention of model rocketry. Uh, it, the starter sets have a launcher, a launch pad, uh, and the rocket with it. It's everything you need to get going except the engines. Uh, and you can get different size engines for uh, the various wind conditions that you may encounter or how high you want them to go. That's part of the fun of launching a rocket. How, how tall are some of the rockets that you carry here, for uh, example? Anywhere from about four inches tall to six feet tall. Six feet! And, and how high would something go that, uh, that is six feet? Uh, the, actually, some of the larger ones go less distances. They're just about being cool and large. Uh, but we can go over 1,500 feet with some of these rockets. My gosh. And, then, and is it the, what is the propellant these days? I know that there was all kinds of different propellants uh, a long time ago. What, what are we using today? We're using solid fuel model rocket uh, engines, which is no different than a solid fuel large rocket engine. And we used to launch frogs up there. I, I assume that there are uh, some of these you can launch frogs. And do they, do they come back with uh, by parachute? Uh, they either come back with parachutes or uh, streamers. Uh, and also we have different styles of rockets that um, can carry payloads with them. Some take pictures on their way down. Oh. There's a large variety of different fun things that uh, different rockets can do. Wow. I, I, I gotta tell you, this has been so interesting, from the trains, to the planes, the automobiles, and the boats, uh, we've talked about uh, transportation. Thanks so much for being part of the program. Um, if you're interested in any of this stuff or any of these hobbies, uh, I encourage you to go to your local hobby shop. If you're in the area, certainly come down to Hobby Masters, but there are lots of hobby shops to, to select uh, your hobby, and obviously there are more hobbies. Than, uh, than what we've talked about today. And uh, that about wraps it up for this segment of Jersey Bay Shore Country. Uh, next time will be part two in uh, some other hobbies that you might want to consider uh, here at the Bay Shore. Uh, not about trains, planes, automobiles, and rockets, but something slightly different. I'm your host, John Schneider. And remember, if you see me out there with a camera, I hope you'll tap me on the shoulder and say hello because nothing is more important than meeting you. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>